It was May 1940 in North Africa when, during a swift advance, the Germans left their left flank exposed. Realizing this, the British launched a fierce counterattack with 86 tanks, supported by an additional 60 French tanks. On the other side, General Rommel and his 7th Panzer Division were in panic when they saw that the new British Matilda tanks were immune to their 37mm pack guns. Rommel immediately ordered all available artillery to be used against the tanks, including the anti-aircraft 88mm flat cannon, which lowered its barrel and started firing at the tanks. It was there that the effectiveness of this weapon against tanks was realized quite by accident, and it would soon receive its special ammunition and quickly become a weapon feared by every tank crew and airman. As Germany was banned from developing and producing weapons after World War I, preparations for a new war had to be conducted in the utmost secrecy. Thus, the development of a new anti-aircraft gun began, misleading France and Britain into thinking it was based on an outdated design. However, it was far from it. Germany demanded a gun that could fire a 10 kilogram round at a muzzle velocity of 900 meters per second with a mount that provided 360 degrees of traverse and an elevation from minus 3 to 85 degrees. Also, a firing rate of 15 to 20 rounds per minute was desirable, and a caliber of 88 millimeters proved very effective even during World War I. Thus, the development of this gun began in complete secrecy, and soon after recognizing its performance, the gun was adopted as an anti-aircraft gun and planned for rearming Germany when Hitler came to power. It went through several improvements and different versions, and by the time World War II started, Germany had about 3,000 Flak 18s. As early as the conflict in Spain in 1937, the 88 was used against ground targets and even destroyed two T-26 tanks and it was noted then that it could be used against ground targets in an emergency and was additionally equipped with a sight for direct firing, just in case. Several variants were also made on half-track chassis for greater mobility. However, this prevented them from being used in anti-aircraft roles because the elevation was from negative 4 to 15 degrees, and they were intended for shooting ground targets. Already in France, the flak proved to be extremely effective, destroying several French tanks with direct hits from 2.5 kilometers to the front side. However, it was in North Africa where this gun really showed what it could do, and from an anti-aircraft gun, it became an anti-everything gun. As the Luftwaffe had temporary complete air supremacy, these guns were used to provide protection from Allied armor. Just in Operation Battleaxe in June 1941, German flax destroyed as many as 90 British tanks. Its high muzzle velocity and large caliber made it capable of penetrating any Allied tank from distances beyond the effective range of enemy anti-tank weapons. Also, the wide open space of the desert allowed the 88 to use its long range and precision to its fullest against Allied tanks. Initially, the standard ammunition was a 17-pound shrapnel grenade that could reach high altitude aircraft, where it would explode at a targeted altitude activated by various types of fuses. About one and a half thousand shrapnel pieces could damage airplanes and their crews within a radius of up to 200 yards, famously called flak. And in the case of a direct hit on an airplane, the destruction would be complete. It had an exceptional range of up to 15 kilometers in height. However, as its versatile use was recognized, Various types of shells were developed for different functions, totaling 19 of them. Eight were high explosive type, seven were armor piercing, and four were solid kinetic energy projectiles. When it comes to armor piercing rounds, now you will understand why the 88 was so terrifying and feared by tank crews. Unlike most allied rounds, which were solid steel designed to penetrate armor, some German armor-piercing rounds, in addition to penetrating the armor, had a delayed percussion fuse with a tracer at its base that would ignite a small bursting charge inside a tank, which would ignite fuel and ammunition of the tank. Now you understand the concern of Allied tank crews. The initial armor-piercing rounds were the Panzergranate 3943, 
which could penetrate up to 120 millimeters of armor at close ranges. As the war progressed, more advanced types of ammunition were introduced, such as the Panzer Granite 4043, an armor-piercing composite rigid shell, which featured a tungsten carbide core and was capable of even greater penetration. Soon after the effectiveness of this gun was realized and the rapid development of tanks on all warring sides, the Germans began to look for ways to put this effective weapon on tracks, so to say. This led to the development of the Tiger I heavy tank, which was equipped with a modified version of the 88mm gun, known as the 8.8cm KWK 36L56. This tank-mounted version of the gun retained the ballistic characteristics of the Flak 88, but was optimized for direct fire against ground targets. The Tiger I, introduced in 1942, became one of the most feared tanks of World War II, largely due to its powerful 88mm gun, which could outrange and outperform most Allied tanks. The 88mm gun was also used in later tank models, including the Tiger II, which featured an even more powerful 8.8cm KWK 43L71 gun. In the role of a tank gun, it proved to be devastating for Allied tanks. For example, the Tiger could destroy almost any Allied tank up to 2,000 meters, while Allied guns had a chance against it at about 1,200 meters. As for accuracy, it was achieved through superior optical sighting systems and a stable firing platform. It could score direct hits regularly, whether used in anti-aircraft or anti-tank roles, contributing significantly to its lethality. The German 88mm flak cannon was a marvel of engineering that combined high firepower with remarkable accuracy. What also made this gun extremely dangerous and effective was its firing mechanism. It used a semi-automatic breech mechanism. Once a round was fired, the breech would automatically open to eject the spent shell casing and then close after the next round was manually loaded. This allowed for rapid firing since the crew only needed to load shells and the breech operation was automatic. The gun operated on a recoil-operated system. Upon firing, the gun barrel and breech would recoil back on their mount to absorb the firing energy. The gun was typically operated by a crew of 7 to 10 soldiers, with specific roles assigned to each member, including commander, gunner, rangefinder, loaders, and spotters. For coordinated control, especially in battery setups where multiple guns were deployed together, a central fire control system was often used. This system allowed one command post to direct the fire of all guns in the battery, optimizing targeting and fire density, particularly effective in anti-aircraft roles. So, the German 88mm flak cannon will forever be remembered as one of the deadliest weapons of World War II. Its formidable capabilities not only shaped the outcomes of numerous key battles, but also instilled a profound respect and fear across the battlefields of Europe and Africa. Due to its effectiveness and superior design, the 88 continued to serve in various armies long after the war had ended, seeing action in various post-war scenarios around the globe until it was finally phased out in the 1960s.